Oh, hey there. Here we are on chapter six. And uh, we're, we only have like five pages to go here to finish it. So I'm going to pick up where I left off yesterday. Part two, chapter six. Compulsive behavior and repetition. Compulsion. When we live our life in a shame-based and codependent stance, focusing inordinately on others, we f naturally feel as though something is missing, that we are somehow incomplete. We are unhappy, tense, distressed, feel bad and or numb. But to be real seems too threatening to us. We tried being real with others, and too often were rejected or punished for it. And so to be real again, to express our feelings and to get our other needs met seems too scary. Besides, we are not used to doing this. So we defend ourselves against realizing our real needs and feelings. Here's the cycle of shame. If you can read those words. I'm going to read them now, starting from the top. Well, I'll first read this middle part, then I'll read the top, and then I'll go around this way. So the center of the circle is shame, the central issue. Then at the top, it's shame, which leads to continued chronic distress, which leads to internal defenses, to alienation from our true self, to compulsive behaviors, to some realization of our true self, to temporary relief from tension and suffering and or numbness, to self remains incomplete, back to shame, and so on. Figure one, cycle of shame and compulsion behaviors modified from Fisher. But our real and true self, our child within, now alienated and hidden from us, has an innate desire and energy to express itself. Secretly, we want to feel its aliveness and its creativity held in for so long, stuck in such an approach avoidance dilemma. Its only way out is through a specific form of ne negative compulsive behavior that was, has worked for us in the past even though we may get only a glimpse of our true self by doing so. Sub such compulsive actions range across a wide spectrum of possible behaviors, from heavy use of alcohol or other drugs to short-term intense relationships to trying to control other person. It may involve overeating, oversexing, overworking, overspending, or even over attending self-help group meetings. This compulsive behavior tends to be negative in some way, such as self-destruction or other destruction. It may produce a crisis as a side effect or may precipitate a crisis for, of, uh, for self and for others. While we can control the behavior in some, to some extent, we have some degree of willpower over it in that we may even plan we may even plan it it often occurs impulsively and automatically as if by reflex when we behave compulsively we usually get temporary relief from tension suffering and numbness even though we might feel about some the we might feel some shame about it and even though of short duration we feel alive again however later we are left feeling shameful and incomplete. This type of behavior has also been called repetition compulsion. It comes about from unsolved internal conflict that we carry in our unconscious mind, the place within us of which we are not usually aware. A way out. From the recovery experience of hundreds of thousands of people, we know that there is an effective way out of this constr uh, constricting and binding effect of shame. 
to tell the story of our suffering to save and support of others. <clears throat> the way out is to tell the story of our suffering to safe and supportive others. What we expose and share is our child within, our true self, with all of its weaknesses and all of its strengths. We cannot heal our shame alone. We need others to help us heal ourselves. They validate our pre, uh, pre, uh, predicaments and our pain, and they accept us as we are. And when we hear others tell their stories and share their shame, we help them to heal their shame. Doing so helps us as well. By such sharing and last, uh, listening, we begin to predict, uh, practice the principle of unconditional love. Such sharing and storytelling is, hard, uh, is heard and seen countless times each day whether in self-help groups, group therapy, individual therapy, or between intimate friends. Blocks to healing. As we begin to heal our shame, we may encounter stumbling blocks within us that prevent us from going ahead with our healing. These blocks include, one, negative attitudes that we may have about ourselves. Two, memories of face, uh, of facial expressions or other images in people that made us feel shameful in the past that we now see in other people. Three, the binding by shame of some important areas in our lives. <clears throat> These areas may include the following. One, feelings. Two, tribes. Sexual, sexuality, aggression, hunger, and the need for inti intimacy. Three, needs, which you can see on chapter four, table two. Number four, thoughts, especially any bad, quotation, bad thoughts. For example, any time that we feel hurt by an authority figure, such as one of our parents, we may feel anger. However, the anger quickly changes into or is covered up by feeling of shame. We may also begin to feel fearful and confused because all of these feelings may begin to feel overwhelming as though we might lose control. We quickly suppress all of them and become numb. During this and for several minutes afterward, we can become dysfunctional in varying degrees. This whole process may just take a few seconds, but we may feel as though we are helpless little children again. Such an occurrence has been called age regression or res reversion to an earlier survival mechanism. Tom is a 45-year-old attorney and father of two. He tells in group therapy of his discovery of a regression to a younger age. It took me 45 years to see what happened when my father put me down. Last month, when I visited him and my mother, within five minutes of her arriving, my father tried to put me down by making a joke of my being an attorney. He said, here comes shyster lawyer. Here comes the shyster lawyer. And then looked at me and my mother, brother, and sister to see if we'd laugh with him. With the help of this group, I've learned how to react. I suddenly felt confused. I've learned how I reacted. I suddenly felt confused, helpless, and angry, as though I were five years old again. I hung my head and went numb. It was a horrible feeling that I've had hundreds of times growing up, and I still have it when he does that. I also have it around people who try to tease or judge me. What I'm realizing is that doing that is one of his main ways of handling conflict or tension in our family. He tries to make a joke or tease or put down whomever 
he is in conflict with. His other way is to leave the person, you know, abandon them, so that the conflict was never handled. So I'm practicing recognizing when I age regress and taking deep breaths and walking around to gather my sanity so I can deal with them or other people like him. I'm setting limits with my father now when he does that. I'm saying to him, I don't like it when you joke about my career like that, and I won't visit you anymore if you keep doing that. We can begin to break free of shame and bind our age regression by becoming aware of it. When it occurs, we recognize it, and we, when we recognize it, we take several slow, deep breaths. <clears throat> Doing this will relieve us, uh, relieve us of our confusion, numbness, and dysfunction, and allow us an increasing awareness of what is happening, so that we can better take control of our ourselves. Instead of being paralyzed, confused, and dysfunctional codependents, we pull ourselves right back into our true selves. And we continue to function as our true selves by getting up and walking around and observing reality around us. If we are with safe, supportive people, we can begin to talk about how we feel. We may also leave the person who is mistreating us. Even if we don't leave, we can gain comfort by grasping our car keys, a symbol of our ability to get away. We also discover that age regression may even be advantageous to us. It tells us immediately that we are being mistreated, or how, or we are being... Uh, age regression tells us immediately that we are being mistreated, or we are being reminded of being mistreated. And when we know that we are being mistreated, we can explore ways of taking action to remedy the situation and to avoid the mistreatment. We know that there is a way out. We are beginning to heal our child within. Thank you. Have a good day. God bless. See you tomorrow, or next time you watch a video. Bye-bye.